you look so badass right now. Thank what is you. your story? Hey, what are you doing right this side? Because you seem like you seem like an interesting person. I don't know if I'll love you or hate you, but I, I can guarantee you're not boring. So let's go across the street and see what we find. All right, perfect. All right, sounds good. All right. If you're doing a fair amount of approaches and your game's fairly good, you're probably getting a ton of numbers, and that's awesome. But it's also problematic because numbers take time and energy to follow up on, and a lot of numbers tend to flake. How much better would it be if you didn't have to worry about the number, but you could go straight to the date? Because at an advanced level, where you lose most girls is between the number and the date anyway, so why not just cut out that step? In fact, looking at guys' results, most guys would do double or triple as well if they just got instant dates instead of numbers when it's possible to do so. But that's the question. How do you know when it's possible? And also, how do you know how to do it? If you haven't taken many girls on instant dates, what do you say, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna show you right now in a clip from inside the Verbal Game Academy course, exactly what I say and what I do to get a girl on an instant date, as well as exactly how I know she's ready to be taken on the instant date. So let's check out that clip right now. I have to go in a minute, but I absolutely adore this look. Like, where did the, how did this even come together? You look, you look so badass right now. What Thank is you. your story? Okay, so there's a lot going on there. First of all, what type of opener is it? It's a direct opener. If she likes you right away, you get a good response. That's amazing, and the set will progress very quickly. If you get a negative response or she doesn't like you or isn't sure, you're more likely to get a quick no before you've been able to convey your personality. What I'm trying to do is give myself a little bit the best of both worlds. So that's where the false time constraint comes in, and that's also why I'm elaborating and having some unique thoughts beyond just, hey, you look good. Um, and then we see her reaction here is generally very, very positive, which is what we're ideally looking for. Thank what is you. your story? Uh, my story or the dress's story? <laughs> so a lot of times after a direct open, if it goes well, you can automatically or, or immediately go to a little bit of that evaluation stage. Let's start with the girl behind the dress and then we'll get to the dress. And that's man to woman in and of itself. It's just an answer to her question, but yeah, I complimented her on the dress and she says the girl or the dress. I'm like, let's talk about the girl first and then the dress, right? It's not the dress first and then the girl. It's not, let's just talk about the dress. I'm not hiding my intentions. I'm not trying to like, you know, beat around the bush with things. I'm being very open in the fact that I'm interested in her, but again, interested, not sold. Uh... I'm Todd. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. She's making an effort, but she's struggling. So rather than have it be nervous and awkward and have her struggle, I'm gonna help her to continue the conversation. I've gotten the information I need, which is she's willing to qualify, and I'm gonna now help her to do that. I'm gonna help her to convey herself to me. Oh my goodness, you do business. Okay. That was like a very business-like handshake. And that's just a tease. That's not even a man to woman tease, it's just a general tease. She basically gave me a really firm handshake, and so I'm teasing on that handshake, right? Or I'm really, I'm just noticing that handshake, and making it something in the interaction. <laughs> like there, there's yeah, you, the, don't, you don't give like a weak handshake, that's gross. Give me hands. Nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> you're like, no, really? But it's okay, what do you do, what do you do for a living? Cause you're like, that was very like. <laughs> uh, do you like, do you do, do real estate? You do like, no, are you a lawyer? Like I what do you? Okay. So you're like creative and like, you know, inventive. Creative enough. So this actually looks a lot like me asking get to know you questions, and in a sense it is. However, I'm also sort of challenging her. It sounds weird, right? So it sounds like I'm giving compliments and asking questions, which are two things you would say are normally bad in game. But what I'm actually doing is I'm giving her a benchmark or a bar to live up to. All right? so she said she's, um, I don't know, advertising, marketing, whatever it is she said. Um, and I basically say, oh, so you're creative, so you're original, so you're inventive, right? This is like something that would be good in that, in that area, but it's not necessarily true, right? So I'm asking her to either qualify herself or I'm asking her to acknowledge that she's not that. In any case, I'm, I'm challenging her, I'm assessing her to a certain amount. Uh -huh. I created enough to get me. Okay, well, that's something. So then she qualifies and says, well, creative enough for this. So she's giving like a modest but trying to impress answer. I say, oh, that's something. As in, oh, you know, that's pretty good. I'm somewhat impressed, right? So this has worked out where I'm giving her a compliment. She couldn't quite live up to the compliment. And so I said, well, no, I still like you a little bit. Right, so my compliment actually turned into a qualification because of the delivery and nature of the compliments. And that's a great way to start qualifying. One of the th things I always say as a way to start qualifying is to challenge the girl. And sometimes, contradictory as it may sound, a compliment can be a challenge because you're challenging them to live up to the compliment. So that's a start, right? Where are you from? Um, I just moved here. As soon as a girl asks you a question on a cold approach, metaphorically and maybe even physically, take a big sigh of relief. Just like, the hard work is done here, right? The hard part is done. I no longer 
have to do pickup. I no longer am doing a cold approach. I'm now talking to someone. I'm just in a conversation. There are two places in game where you have to give your power away a little bit, the open and the close. Those are the parts of game you want to make as subtle and smooth and meaningless as possible. Once she's asking you questions, be like, opener achieved. I am not going back to opening, I'm just in a conversation, and anything and everything I can do to not make this look like game and not make it look like a cold approach, that's the right approach. Okay. So I've been here for like three weeks. There, so yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah, come over here. And interestingly enough, she notices this. She notices that it now feels like not a cold approach and that we're talking to each other and we're just having a conversation, and she actually moves us out of traffic to the side of the sidewalk. And the funny thing about this is, this is something I tell my students to do, right? So she did it for me in this case, but it's a big thing. If you're in a crowded place, move the girl over to the edge of the sidewalk, move her girl over against the wall of the building if you're on a sidewalk, like say in New York or whatever. Um, take the girl, she's in a park, and go sit with her on a bench for a second. Because when you're in the place where you first met, it feels and looks like game, right? It feels and looks, and it reminds her that it was a pickup. As soon as you're sitting somewhere else, walking somewhere else, doing something else, now it just feels like you're together. And this is great because she actually did it. So that tells me that she's already feeling that way, right? She actually just made an escalation move for me. She venue changed me. That's incredible. That doesn't happen very often. Most of the time you're gonna have to do this for her, but this very move she did, you should be doing in your interactions. Because you have like the most like sweet, innocent like face, but then the dress and look and then the expressions that come off that face, I'm like, this, girl, this girl's gonna be trouble. And that is a canned line, sort of. All the stuff about the dress and whatever, that's, that's added on. But the idea of you have a sweet and innocent face, but you're trouble, or a sweet innocent face, bad girl mannerisms, that is a canned line. Why do I use it? Because it works. It's worked for a decade and a half for me, and it will probably continue to work until every single one of you guys uses it, and a girl says to me, I've, I've heard that before. Um, but it's, it's a really good line. It's a line that I've used a lot of times, and it works for me. It's a great way, when things are going well, to establish the idea that I do like you and I'm comfortable with that, but I also feel like you know there's some resistance or some some hesitation on my part. It's a great way to set the frame of um, interested but not sold. Wait, what are you doing right this side? Because you seem like you seem like an interesting person. I don't know if I'll love you or hate you, but I, I can guarantee you're not boring. So notice how I set up the instant date with a push pull. I set it up with the, the fact that I'm evaluating her, etc. I don't just say, hey, I like you. Let's go make plans. I make sure that there's still that sexual tension. I make sure it's still a win for her. Okay, so what am I doing right now? Yeah, what are you up to right now? I just left. Okay. Um, I was gonna head in that direction because okay. I parked your other. Okay. How do you feel about a quick drink with an attractive new friend? And I am taking a cocky frame, right? Um, but I'm a little obvious about it. And that comes up because she's actually gonna notice that and start to give me a shit test. Are you talking about yourself because you're selling yourself? Like, okay. Um, uh, I got a drink though, yes. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that was very cute. You're like, wait, does he mean? She's gonna realize that she doesn't want to lose me and she's gonna undermine her own shit test. This is a very rare thing to have happen, um, but it's very telling in terms of her inner psychology and it tells you a lot about how women think. So let's go across the street and see what we find. All right, perfect. All right, sounds good. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that clip from Inside Verbal Game Academy, my new mega course on exactly how to communicate with women, everything I know after two decades in the game. In addition to the digital content, that course is actually an eight week class where every single week you'll be talking with me, getting missions from me, having your questions answered by me, and that course is actually starting very, very soon within the next few days. With that said, the special offer we have on the program will also be ending at that time, so I encourage you to check it out at verbalgameacademy.com right now before we start the course and before the price goes up. Check it out, verbalgameacademy.com. See you there.